Tyler, we do know yes. with COVID, so many of us uh, need to go on a little bit of a diet. Not you. You've probably been skinny all your life. You can eat a pound of cookies and not gain an ounce, right? That's debatable. So many of us, have, you know, it's like the freshman 15. Sure. Well, it's the COVID 20. But it really makes you wonder, what is a road diet? Oh, uh, I hope it's not eating gravel. That's, uh, that's Good response. A, uh, <laughs> I was surprised at this terminology, but once yes. you actually uh, dig into it, you'll understand it. Mm -hmm. With us now, let's bring in Craig Bryson. He's the Senior Communications Manager at the Road Commission for Oakland County. Craig, great to have you with us. How are you? I'm great, Ronnie. How are you? Good to be back. Uh, how'd you guys come up with the terminology, a road diet? Uh, it's been in the in the field for a little while. Um, I think it came around maybe 10 or 15 years ago when people started looking at something that was kind of counterintuitive, and that is if you actually reduce the number of lanes on a road, can you improve the performance? Can you enhance the community? Um, and, and people started to realize in some cases there's benefits of doing that. And it's uh, it's an interesting way to identify something and people kind of, as, as you did, I think, when they think about it a little bit, learn about it, it makes a lot of sense and they remember the term. With this, as someone who lives in this area, I am not looking forward to this project in the least bit because traffic is going to be a nightmare, but I will say something needs to be done. And what we're talking about is the stretch of Orchard Lake from Commerce to Middle Belt, uh, because traffic, especially around that curve there at Ward's Point, can get a bit dangerous. A lot of people just don't realize there's a traffic light there as well. So something needs to be done. So tell us more about the survey. Yeah, so not only is it the, is it the Ward's Point and the, and the traffic volume, um, that's a four lane road with no center left turn lane, which is uh, really kind of an old fashioned configuration. We don't build roads like that anymore because people turn left. And when there's not a left turn lane, they have to turn from one of the through lanes. And what we see inevitably in that kind of configuration is you have an increase in crashes. You have rear end crashes where people aren't expecting the car in front of them to stop to turn left and they run into them or we see sideswipe crashes where a car is not expecting the car in front of them to stop to turn left and they quickly shift lanes and not realizing there's a car next to them and they slam into the car next to them. So we do have pretty high crash uh, numbers on that road. I think we've got, uh, what was it, 389 crashes over a three year period from 2017 to 2019 in that, that section of road. And they're predominantly those rear end collisions and side swipe collisions caused by the lack of a turn lane. So the question becomes, you know, what do you do to solve that problem? Um, and because as you know, it's a pretty well developed area. There's not a lot of room to expand the road. And the federal funding that we got for 2023 for the road only allows us to resurface the road. It doesn't provide any funding for purchasing additional right of way. Um, nor would we necessarily want to do that because that would mean we'd end up taking buildings and knocking down buildings. We don't want to do that. We don't want to disturb the, the community. Um, there's, a, there's a great um, commercial district there. We don't want to negatively impact that. So what can we do within the existing um, curb lane, uh, curb mark, curbs there? So we uh, hired a consultant to do a study and they came up with several options. Um, one of them was something we really hadn't ever considered before and have never done before. Um, and that's where we reduce it from um, four through lanes, two lanes in either direction, to two through lanes in one direction, one through lane in the other direction with a center left turn lane. Um, we call that the unbalanced option for obvious reasons. Um, that's one option. The other option is a traditional three lane road where we just drop each direction to one lane in each direction and a center left turn lane. The problem with the three lane option is it significantly reduces traffic capacity and causes is likely to cause further backup. Our, our computer modeling suggests there would be increased congestion. Um, with the unbalanced option, there would actually be um, most situations less congestion and, and, and safety improvements in both directions. So this is new, it's different. We wanna find out what the public thinks of this. So we've, we've put up a survey um, and, and asked for public feedback on this. So with that, uh, Craig, the way you just explained it, can I take back my multiple surveys that I may have already done? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
but well, I, once I they're submitted, they're submitted. <laughs> you know, because I do it maybe for my husband, because he's not going to go online and do it, and then you know, I'll talk to someone else. Maybe I do it for a neighbor, you know, my sister, you know. Uh, but because I will say, when you're talking about. Um, I was looking at it and thinking the three lane would be the best option, but as you're, because the map on the survey is a little bit confusing when you're talking about, you know, two one way, one the other with the turn lane, it looks confusing. And, uh, you know, considering how people are handling still roundabouts <laughs> in the state of Michigan, how long is it going to take them to get used to that, do you think? Well, I think it, it does look a bit confusing when you look at it in a map. I think when you actually would drive it, I think it'd be fairly intuitive. Um, it's simply two through lanes. Really, if you're going westbound, there'd be very little change other than there would be a center left turn lane that you could pull in to turn. Um, going eastbound, you would only have the one through lane, but you'd have the center left turn lanes. I think it would be uh, simpler in, in reality you know, when you're experiencing it uh, than looking at it on the map. So I, I don't anticipate that it would be that confusing for motorists to use. So not as confusing as uh, that shift in the roadway in Troy when you're coming off 75. I always feel like I'm about to go in the wrong direction and pretty soon cars are going to be speeding at me. So it's not that type of configuration then, right? No, no, correct. Uh, so with that too, I believe the survey uh, ends today. It does. We, it's open till midnight tonight, so people have a, a limited window to get their responses into us if they would like to. There, there will also, by the way, be, once this is done, we'll, we'll um, get back with the stakeholders, which is the leaders of the four communities along there, some of the business community, local developers, and we'll, you know, we'll look at the, the feedback we receive from the public, and then there'll be a public information meeting to share what at that point we believe will be our um, proposed alternative. And really the survey takes not even two minutes. So um, I know that uh, the city of Kigo, most of them all have a link to it as well. There's a link uh, through the Road Commission's page. I put one up on my social media as well. And this is one of okay. these things, Craig, where I'm like, everyone likes to complain once the work is done. So this is your chance to put your two cents in as to what you want to see happen. But I will say talking to you and having you explain the options helps a lot more than just taking the survey. Good, good. It's, I mean, it really is safety driven. This is, you know, safety is our top priority. This is a corridor that we've been looking at for a long time, trying to figure out what we can do to, to reduce crashes there. And this is a really kind of a, a creative, interesting, potential um, alternative, and, and we're, we're kind of excited about it. Craig Bryson with us here on the Megacast. He's the Senior Communications Manager for the Road Commission for Oakland County. And Craig, with that too, uh, because that corner and that stretch, as we said, can be pretty dangerous. Um, I know a lot of times I try to avoid it. Uh, my hairdresser is right there on that corner, and it's so hard to come out. You can't see traffic coming, um, and there's no back entrance. And so sometimes I just ride my bike or walk over because <laughs> it just avoid the headache altogether. Um, but is there also any thought, because we do know that where the mobile home community is, which is right there in that stretch, and that's, you know, in the discussion, in the planning stages of being redeveloped. So if that's being redeveloped, was there any talk with that potential owner to try to come up with something? Because a lot of people are already concerned of the additional traffic redeveloping that area will bring uh, to Orchard Lake. We are not, <clears throat> excuse me, we are not at the moment, um, I'm sure Kego Harbor is. Um, from our perspective, once there is a more specific plan, you know, and, and they need permits to access the road, we'll work with them at that point. Um, the traffic signal there is not likely to go away. Uh, it'll be a question of how they, you know, get ingress and egress out of that development once they once they get real specific plans. Uh, with that, as uh, well, Craig, uh, it would have been nice to have done this last year in the middle of pandemic with not a lot of traffic. <laughs> because Absolutely. I'm thinking about this, and you know, if you live in our area, there's really only Orchard Lake Road to get you to and from certain areas. Um, and so I'm just picturing the orange barrels now. It's going to be a headache. Yeah, well, and some of us have been involved in this long enough to remember the last time we, we redid Orchard Lake Road, which I think was 
2000, 2001, something like that. And it was it was a challenge, and we worked closely with the businesses to try to, um, uh, you know, make sure everything we kept access to all the businesses, and we'll do that again. Um, the the good thing is this is um, in the big scheme of things, it could be a lot worse. This is not a complete reconstruction; it's a resurfacing, um, so it's not quite as intense as it could be, and we will. Um, maintain access to all the homes and businesses throughout the, the construction. But of course, it, it will be challenging when you take um, a lot of traffic and, and during construction, we'll probably close at least part of the road. We'll squeeze traffic down. Um, it'll, it'll definitely be challenging. Um, it is not gonna happen until 2023. And you know the reason for that year is because we rely on federal road dollars to do this kind of a major project. And we have to apply for that money at least three or four years in advance. And we did apply for that money and we got approved for 2023. So that'll be the year that it happens. So, I mean, the good part of that is we all have a little bit of time to prepare and anticipate, um, but it is coming. Uh, what's the price tag for a project like this? This one is, uh, what is it? 2.3 million, I believe, somewhere in that neighborhood. Uh, yeah, 2.3 million is, is uh, the current estimate. Um, you know, we're pretty far out. We haven't done the actual design work, so that could change a bit between now and 2023. But at the current point, that's the estimate. It's really not as bad as I thought it would be, you know. And that's because it's not a complete reconstruction. We're, you know, we're, we're putting down new asphalt. We'll probably mill off the existing um, asphalt, put down new asphalt. Um, you know, the, the reconfiguration is really almost more a matter of striping than uh, of actual road construction. Craig Bryson with us here on the Megacast. And Craig, obviously it's summertime, which is uh, construction season here in the lovely state of Michigan. What other projects are uh, going on or about to go on for us to avoid the areas? We have a ton of stuff either going on or about to start. Um, some of them in close proximity to you, but also all over the county. Um, a couple of the, the other big ones we've got um, in that area, well, in Farmington Hills, we've got some um, Orchard Lake Road uh, work about to start on um, from just south of 11 Mile up to 696. We're gonna do concrete slab replacement where we come in and take out the worst concrete slabs and repair them. Um, that's going to start uh, this coming Monday on the 14th and go through August. There'll be there'll be lane closures in both directions, so that's going to be um, it's going to be a bit congested in there. Um, as you probably know, we've got Maple Road uh, currently closed between Franklin and Inkster to be um, resurfaced. Uh, that's going until late September. Um, another big one that's coming um, in that general area in Commerce Township, we've got Union Lake Road is going to close. Um, starting in July for the uh, replacement of the culvert between Wise and Willow, which is going to be going to be tricky. Um, anybody that drives that area knows it's it's a pretty heavily traveled road, and the and the detour routes are, are not the most convenient in the world, thanks to all the lakes in the area. Um, but that's that's coming, um, and that'll, that'll last until the fall, so at least a couple of months. Um, up in Waterford, we're we're right in the middle of the big uh, Walton Boulevard resurfacing project between uh, Dixie and uh, just east of Sashaba Road. That remains open two lanes, uh, one lane in each direction right now while we're doing the, the project. Sashaba is closed at the south side of the Sashaba Walton intersection currently, but that should open on Monday. Ooh, that's good. Uh, yep, yep. Um, another big one on the east side of the county, we got Adams Road between uh, Long Lake and Square Lake. It's gonna be starting Monday. Um, That'll close to southbound traffic on June 21st and then uh, remain closed to southbound traffic for uh, several months. That's a major uh, resurfacing project. Um, we got a lot of, lot of concrete repair work going on in, on Big Beaver and Troy. Uh, another big one that's starting is uh, Cranbrook Road between 14 Mile and Maple on the Birmingham Bloomfield Township border. Boy, you're uh, just getting us in all directions. You know? We are, we are. It's, it's a big construction season, and we're doing a lot of little resurfacing projects all over the county too. Uh, you might have seen these where we come in and we do really about three days worth of uh, paving um, over about a two week period. We call it our preservation overlay program. We slap down two inches of new asphalt on a road and you get a nice smooth new surface. Uh, that's relatively little uh, pain for the, 
for the gain that we get out of that. But big, big construction season. So with that, Craig, uh, just another minute or two with you here on the show. Uh, do you have enough employees to get all these projects completed? No, no. Uh, we like everybody else. And like uh, Doug just mentioned before us, we too are uh, um, struggling to get people in the door, whether it's um, the, the uh, temporary summer laborers we, we have hire every year to help out in construction projects, maintenance projects, to uh, civil engineers, to everything else. We're, we're hiring, we're looking for, for people. So anybody who's looking for a job in the, in the road industry and uh, wants to work at a great place, please come to our website and, and look at our job postings. Craig Bryson with us here on the Megacast, a Senior Communications Manager for the Road Commission of Oakland County. Craig, we always uh, appreciate your time, but also thanks for clearing up some of the confusion around the survey. Um, I'm going to go on and try to redo mine a few more times since we have till the end of the day, right? <laughs> you do. Please do. <laughs> so we, again, appreciate your time as always. And if we don't talk to you for a few weeks, have a nice summer. Thank you. You do the same. Appreciate the opportunity.